wonderful people out there in the dark. Thank you again so much for checking in. So I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about something that affects all of us, temperature, and the myriad of ways we measure temperature. There's actually four, um, Fahrenheit, centigrade slash Celsius, Kelvin, and a little known one called Ranking, but we're not gonna get into that a whole lot. I'll just briefly mention it. What's that, Sancho? You do? Well, that's great news. What's this lucky lady's name? What do you mean, I don't know? How do you not know her name? Sancho, you have, you hooplehead. You have to know her name. What, what, what are you gonna call her, sugar britches? Yeah, that's what you, you just told me. He said, I don't know. How, how do you not know her name? You, you have to. Oh, I understand. Her last name is No. First name, Ida. So her name is Ida No. Dr. I don't know. Well, that, wait a minute. You, you have a date with Dr. No? You know what? I'm kind of in the middle of something. Go have a good time. Take the Tesla, have a blast. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it later. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing something here. Thanks, buddy. Doctor, I don't know. Like a bad Abbott and Costello routine. Anyway, where was I? Temperature. Simple, invented a long time ago, very important. Let's start with Fahrenheit. Now, in the Fahrenheit temperature scale, is based on basically water freezing slash melting at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And that very same water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and what Mr. Fahrenheit did is the interval between those two points, 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, there, there's basically 180 equal parts or degrees, if you will, which makes things sort of very complicated. Now, the German physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, uh, he kind of came up with this scale in about 1724. He was actually one of the first guys, or the first guy, to have two separate thermometers, though his were mercury-filled. Um, an interesting thing, you know, they, they, that glass tube, you know, they heat it and they would they'll, they blow in it until this little ball shows up in the end, you know, through the tube. Well, they would stick that in a vat of mercury and the vacuum created by the heat and stuff would pull, pull the mercury up into the ball, which fascinates me, but I don't wanna to get too much into the weeds. And by the way, most of these uh, thermometers we have today, that red, that's actually just dyed alcohol or mineral spirits. We stopped using mercury quite a long time ago because it's, well, deadly. Um, anyway, so Fahrenheit, uh, was the first guy that, that was able to, to take the temperature of something with two separate thermometers and, and got the same temperature. Now, a lot of people think um, that he kind of uh, grifted this concept and some of these ideas from another cat named Ollie Roma. Because Ollie Roma back in like 1708, I don't know, 1710, he was working on his own temperature scale and actually met with Fahrenheit. I'm not sure exactly how, I think, you know, a friend of a friend, I don't know, they hung out and it, it sounds to me like uh, uh, Fahrenheit sort of stole some of his notes, made a few changes to the scale, because interestingly enough, interestingly enough, Roma actually had a freezing melting point of water as zero, and for some odd reason, body temperature at 22.3. So Fahrenheit, of course, uh, freezing melting of water, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which a lot of people, interestingly enough, think that uh, Fahrenheit may have been a Freemason. And for any, any of you who know anything about the, the Masons and the Masonic Temple, there's actually 32 degrees of enlightenment. So a lot of people think he chose uh, 32 degrees um, as sort of a tribute, I suppose, um, uh, to the Masons. But anyway, uh, our, our, our next scale, uh, centigrade or Celsius. Now, um, th this, this uh, scale is based on uh, water freezing or melting at zero degrees. 
and then that very same water boiling at 100 degrees. Uh, and this, this was developed by a Swedish cat named Andre Celsius, of course, uh, in 1742. Now it was called the centigrade scale all the way up until 1948 when it was officially changed to honor uh, Celsius. They changed the name to the Celsius scale. Um, but it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's considered a very easy um, scale to use and a lot of people still call it the centigrade scale because of the basically the 100 degree interval between uh, freezing and boiling versus old Fahrenheit's 180 degree intervals. Um, uh, uh, because of its 100 uh, degree interval, it's, it really incorporates into the metric system, and we all know what a mystery the metric system is to Americans, even though it's used basically worldwide. The Fahrenheit scale is really only used here, Virgin Islands, places we own, and, and I think Burma, but the rest of the planet uses uh, the Celsius scale. Um, and be, mostly because it's the easiest scale to use, uh, but that's another story. Um, our, our final uh, is Kelvin. Now Kelvin, this is a temperature scale that that's, uh, was actually named uh, after the, the cat that discovered it or devised it, William Kelvin. And, and he proposed this scale in 1848. Now what's interesting is this is an absolute temperature scale, um, which basically having an absolute zero, uh, absolute zero, which, which in which no other temperature below that exists. And, and you heard me say like degree Celsius or Fahrenheit Celsius. Kelvin, you don't say uh, degree because there is no degrees, it's an absolute. And the funny thing about absolute zero is it can't technically be achieved because really absolute zero would be a temperature with molecules, they sort of stop moving. So it would be sort of infinitely cold. Um, in Kelvin, the freezing point of water or melting point of water is 270 degree, 273 Kelvin. See, I said degrees, I was wrong. It's 273 Kelvin. And the boiling point of that same water is um, 373 Kelvin. Um, one of the reasons Kelvin came about uh, was about that time in the early 1800s, you know, 1810, 1812 is uh, someone had basically, or a lot of people started to discover that there was a relationship or a correlation between the volume and temperature in various gases. And that sort of led uh, to the, the Kelvin scale. There's one other scale invented in 1859 by Macron uh, Rankin, but I don't want to get into that. It would get too deep into the weeds. But to kind of give you an idea, you have... Um, so the boiling point of, of water in Fahrenheit is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. In Celsius, it's 100 degrees. And in Kelvin, it's 373. The, uh, what we say, the freezing or melting point of, of water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius, and 273 Kelvin. Um, absolute zero, is negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 270 degrees Celsius, and then zero Kelvin. To give you an idea, the coldest, the coldest point the moon gets is like negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be 173 degrees Celsius and about 100 Kelvin. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, ben Franklin actually uh, charted the Gulf Stream using a Fahrenheit uh, thermometer. Here, here, take a look. Here's the map that uh, Mr. Franklin uh, put out once he figured out uh, the Gulf Stream, which, which saved hundreds, well, I don't know, hundreds of hours, but yeah, probably hundreds of hours for boats using the Gulf Stream uh, as opposed to trying to cut straight across. Once again, you know, a straight line is not always the, the shortest way to get there. But take a look, here's a picture of his map. Kind of interesting. So, some quick math, and I'll show you a couple pictures. But Celsius to Kelvin is, is relatively simple, again, because it's like the metric system. It's basically whatever degree Celsius plus 273. So if it's 21 degrees Celsius, 
Uh, you add 273, that means it'd be 294 Kelvin. Be the reverse for Kelvin to Celsius. If, if it'd be Kelvin minus 273 degrees Celsius. So if you got whatever, 313 Kelvin, you get 40 degrees Celsius. Fahrenheit, stuff we use, is way more complicated. Fahrenheit to Celsius, so Celsius equals Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees times 5 ninths. So 89 degrees Fahrenheit equals 31.7 degrees Celsius, because that's easy to do in your head. I wrote it down, and I still struggle. So Celsius to Fahrenheit would be, Fahrenheit would equal the degree Celsius times 9 fifths plus 32. So like 50 degrees Celsius equals 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? So, I know what you're thinking. Ryle, why haven't we changed the metric system here in America and Burma and our Virgin Islands? Well, the Brits and a lot of other folks in the early to mid 60s actually basically converted everything over to the metric system. We tried to in 1975, uh, Congress actually passed a law, but unfortunately it was voluntary. So uh, we decided not to do it. And by 1982, after several years of trying, it was just too hard for us. So we stick with uh, the standard system, not the metric system. And uh, henceforth, we use Fahrenheit and not Celsius. Though this has caused some uh, confusion. We had a Mars rover crash because of the confusion between the metric system and, and our system. And obviously it can be confusing with temperatures. Anybody who's ever worked on a car using metric, metric and standard, it can, uh, it can trip you up. But um, for the most part today, obviously we use Fahrenheit, the rest of the world uses Celsius. Um, uh, uh, Kelvin is really only used in the scientific community because it deals in absolutes, not, not varying degrees like 98.6 or 98.8. You know, our subtleties don't matter for us, but in science, absolutes become incredibly, incredibly important, obviously. And I think the ranking system is used uh, a lot of times in industry. Um, but anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting and I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to share that with you. Hopefully you got a sort of a kick out of this. Um, do a little digging. I think, um, I think you'll find some of this interesting. Here, take a look. Here's a, here's a few pictures of some comparisons of Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius, and, and Kelvin. Um, just some quick, quick little charts. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Hopefully you got a kick out of those. I don't know. I did. It interests me. Um, so in this world, when you could be anything you want to be, you'd be kind, you'd be humble, you'd be forgiving, you'd be melting snow. Bye-bye. Forgot my boots. And my book.